Welcome back to Castle Coombe for this Motors TV live race day. The Formula Ford cars are making their way now off the grid. Good old fashioned Formula Ford FF 1600s where they don't have wings, they can overtake very readily and it's going to be a 15 minute race and this should be an absolute cracker with Roger Orgy Jr, the man on pole position. Nathan Ward alongside, got one car however that hasn't got away and is stranded on the grid. So that's going to need a bit of help from the marshals in order for that to get going. 28 it is, you can see there, the car going nowhere. And Paul Vivian, whose brother David is a bit further up the grid and wants to watch, in fact, in this race, will need a push to get that Swift to live up to its name. Everybody else making their way around on this warming up lap. And Charlie Butler Henderson, we're looking still at a damp and pretty slippy road here, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to see lots of action from the Formula Fords. There'll be a little bit of slip streaming um, along the Castle Coombe circuit here. So, um, lots of action from the Formula Ford. So, as I say, it's Roger Orgy, the man on pole position. And there, finally getting himself into the race is Paul Vivian. Because everyone's gone past him, he'll now have to start at the back of the grid. And we wish him luck from there. On the subject of good luck messages, I think I'm right in saying that, thanks to the joys of Twitter, Jenny has good luck messages and good luck wishes for people in this race. Jenny, is that right? Yes, I certainly do. Lolly Lol, username on Twitter, has got in touch saying my sons Adam and Richard Higgins are in the uh, Formula uh, Ford races and I would like to wish them both luck with all my love. So there we are. Motherly love always goes a little bit extra. Absolutely right. So we'll keep an eye to them and see how they get on at the point of the grid that they're at. Suggest that we're going to get some reasonable results out of them. How's that for understeer? Roger Orgy desperately trying to get some warmth into the tyres, but that looked like a very, very odd angle for the wheels to be at, especially on a green flag that. Yeah, that was very aggressive on the front end. He's obviously testing just to see. There's quite a few of them doing it, actually. They're just testing to see how greasy this track is. As the circuit slowly starts to dry out, it actually gets slipperier, much, much greasier, than actually when it's really, really wet. The, the, um, it sort of turns like really oily and greasy. So we've got to keep an eye out for that a little bit later on. So I think they're just turning the lock getting the front tyres as warm as they possibly can and just seeing the, the uh, track conditions. So the car's making their way towards the grid. Felix Fisher, another one to watch, you saw there going through in car 26. Felix, who is in one of the Van Diemen's from the year 2000, when Formula 4 ran for uh, ZTEC engines, but quite a lot of those cars now converted to use the Kent engines. There are two other drivers to look for in this, 111 being one of them, Ben Norton with the Australian-built Spectrum, the Cars built by Mike Borland and his company not far from Melbourne. But he's a long way back by his standards, Ben, on the fifth row. And also on the seventh row is Ed Moore with the Ray. And that's a car that's normally to be found up near the front of the grid. So two other drivers to keep an eye on. Heading up to the grid now. The first couple of rows are there with Luke Cooper on the second row alongside Stephen Jensen. Now, Stephen, another man to watch in the all white spectrum. There it is on the outside of row two of the grid. Had his first ever wins here. Uh, at this equivalent meeting last year after eight seasons of trying but he finally got there and having scored that first victory backed it up with the second later on in the day the third row of the grid nick jones and felix fisher who talked about a moment ago adam higgins and james raven are on the fourth row of the grid alex ames and ben norton who is certainly one to watch in the uh, wiltshire college run spectrum next on the grid and still they come pouring up towards the line including michael bradley and stephen brace girdle and vincent mann there as well as we're just about ready to go racing The first of the two Castle Coombe Formula Ford 1600 Championship races then here are about to get underway. It's 15 minutes of racing, Roger Orgy Jr. on pole position in the green and white car, the uh, white with the Daylow yellow bit, sort of Braun-esque in its livery alongside is that of Nathan Ward, who is fourth in the championship. Roger Orgy, uh, by dint of winning the first round of the series on Easter Monday, is the championship leader, the man on pole position, and the lights have gone to red. The race gets underway now. Away they go on a slippery road. Good start by Luke Cooper from the second row of the grid. Felix Fisher gets bogged down. Quite a few drivers with wheel spin. Everybody has got away, but not everybody making a clean start. And so on the run for the first time up towards Quarry, Roger Orgy has lost that pole position, hasn't he? And also going backwards, Nathan Ward. So it's going to be a very jumbled order as they work their way out of Quarry on this, the first lap of the race. Spray still a factor as well. And so with Nick Jones having made a good start also, whoops, somebody in trouble there. Luke Cooper almost running out of road in the blue and white car. This is backing up what Charlie was saying about it being so, so slippery. Oliver White getting all crossed up there as well with the black Van Diemen. So for the first time into the S's, and there's the first bit of contact, and off goes Ian Houston. I'm afraid the building surveyor with the 
Van Diemen RF89 is in trouble. There was another spinning Van Diemen in the background. It's been a pretty lively first half of the lap, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Actually, that was um, poor old uh, Mr. Houston there. Just sort of was a sitting duck, really. The other car sort of drove into him, and then the rear wheel then bounced up from the wishbone. So that would be a, a definitely non-finish with the, the red car. Didn't quite get the number off, but um, they made contact. Absolutely right. So the leaders work their way through tower. Great variety of lines being employed there as some drivers go to the outside to try and find a bit more grip. Others tiptoe their way through. Ed Moore there in the yellow ray, still trying to work his way into contention as the leading cars work their way up towards the end of lap one then. So Roger Orgy, the man that was on pole position, not making that great start and giving himself quite a bit of work to do now as they work their way down towards the end of the opening lap. Stephen Jensen, somebody else, has had a good first lap then. And as the cars turn their way out of camp corner over the timing line, it's Stephen Jensen in the lead of the race ahead of Roger Orgy. In third spot it is Luke Cooper. And then fourth over the line is David Vivian. I said he was going to be one to watch. That's a good first lap from him. In fifth place is Nathan Ward off the front row. So now trying to recover. And in sixth place is Ben Norton having qualified 10th. That's the way the leading group is at the moment. But Stephen Jensen leading by over a second. And that's a pretty useful margin in Formula Ford. Yeah, and in these conditions as well, great visibility. So he can actually see exactly where he's going. Whereas these guys are sort of squabbling around for grip, position and space oh. on the track. As we were talking about lack of grip. Uh, perfect timing. Thank you for that, um, young driver. Um, but these guys are also young carters that have worked their way up. Maybe they're in their first race today or first season in Formula Ford on the stepping stone to the um, maybe elusive Formula One drive, you know, but you never know. We might be looking at some young stars here, um, always looking for um, an extra move on, um, on their colleagues that have grown up together in karting. And Houston, we have a problem. Ian Houston limps down the pit lane with damage, as there is a place being gained, look, by Nathan Ward. Not quite gained, in fact. He was alongside Luke Cooper, but he couldn't make it stick, and then he slithers out wide on the outside of Tower. And that just goes to show the, the, the blue and white car on the outside there, getting much more grip, getting off that yep. greasy, rubbered line, um, got the good traction and kept position. So down they come then towards the end of lap number two. Stephen Jensen's lead, I would suspect, is diminished ever so slightly this time. Roger Orgy is behind him. There for third, Luke Cooper ahead of Nathan Ward. And then the next pair making the run now into camp corner. David Vivian just ahead of Ben Norton. Ben Norton's normally pretty quick, so he's one to watch then as he comes across the line. But David Vivian can make a Formula Ford car as wide as anybody. He's not an easy man to get past. Ben Norton tries to line up to have a go to get past his former teammate. The pair of them are nose to tail going up now towards Quarry. David Vivian, you see what I mean about he makes that a wide car. He's everywhere. Ben Norton wants to be. And so David Vivian hangs on to the place. Now Ben Norton tries to go around the outside there looking for the extra traction. Doesn't work for him though. No, but he will still get a much better run on the exit. But you know, the, the next corner is a chicane, so you've got to be very, very brave and sacrifice a lot of time to do a lunge up the inside of, um, of the S's. So out of that they come, David Vivian it is, keeping Ben Norton at bay. Ben, who's been very successful, not only in terms of the Castle Coombe FF1600 Championship, but also in the Formula Ford Carnival, the annual event that used to run here. Now the leaders working their way around lap number three, 11 minutes to go, shorter race than we have for the minis, it's 15 minutes here. And David Vivian again under pressure at tower, but Ben Norton realizes he can't go through on the inside, he moves to the outside to have a look. And there, scrabbling for grip also, is uh, Nick Jones, number eight, in one of the many cars run by Kevin Mills, who's not just a very good team owner, but Kevin himself, multiple champion in Formula Ford 1600 around here. So as the road continues to dry, that gives us, Charlie Butler Henderson was saying, the drivers this extra problem, and the circuit is becoming slippery. It's not just wet, it now becomes a very slippery road, and a battle raging on here as well, as Adam Higgins tries to gain ground, coming down towards camp, but he can't do so there. The race leader is Stephen Jensen. 1.4 seconds is the gap now, but Nathan Ward recovering after his pop start. He's up into third and he's now the quickest man on the circuit. He's looking at the fight to be seventh, which is just at the moment Nick Jones ahead of Adam Higgins. Now, which way does Higgins go? Going up towards Quarry. Thinks about the outside line. Wide in and tight out might be the go here. Let's see, does the wide in bit. Jones slithers across the road a little bit. Can Higgins get up the inside of him now, heading towards the S's? You could see what was in his mind, and it's just about worked. He's got the line for the corner. Is he fully alongside those? They get towards the S's. Yes, he is. Textbook move. Yeah, great move, but let's just look on the exit. Has he then lost so much because he's gone on a tight line? No, miles away. That was a really nice, brilliant move. Forced the, um, the other driver into going wide on the exit. And Jones also slithered his way a little bit into the S's, so that's cost him some time. Lap four here, and it's Stephen Jensen still in the lead. So Jensen leading the way, Roger Orgy in second place, 
And 1.4 seconds it is between them. There's David Vivian still battling on, but now Ben Norton's got ahead of him. David Vivian therefore falls back into sixth spot. Yeah, Nathan Ward obviously with fourth earlier, now moving up to third place. Is the quickest man on the circuit, as David just said. And has, oh, Jensen just gone quicker again, and the circuit is drying out, obviously. So lots of different changes for the fastest laps at the moment. And it's back to Ward again. Ward gets it. So the, the, the lap time for the fastest lap changed three times as the, uh, the top three went through the start finish line. Nathan Ward, of course, is chasing, so he's got something to motivate him, whereas Stephen Jensen is in the lead and therefore just needs to hang on in there. But Nathan Ward, and there he is, the quickest man in the race now, is going after Roger Orgy Jr. He's had a very successful single-seater racer of years past. Up they come towards the S's. Behind him in fourth place is Luke Cooper. Now, how long is it going to take for Nathan Ward to catch Roger Orgy? It's a 1.4-second gap, but he's only a hundredth of a second quicker, so it's not going to be that easy to reel him in car with a Neil Bold tuned engine, the man from Manchester who is very much uh, one of the leading people to prepare a Formula 4 power unit, and there off the road has got Bob Higgins, who is what, four times a Castle Coon Formula 4 champion, and he's not the only one in drama, because that is number eight, Mick Jones, getting it all wrong, and somehow he kept away from everything solid. Yeah, very lucky, did a complete 360, missed everything, just got a mouthful of grass and then carried on, so a little bit of a scare there at um, Castle Coon, and he will be definitely... Um, catching his breath back from that one. Very lucky move. But uh, when the camera was on Ward earlier, number 23, uh, fastest man on the circuit at the moment, that was, um, he really is using every single inch of this racing circuit. And if you do go offline slightly, especially the circuit's now starting to get a little, maybe possibly a bit of a dry line in some areas, hence the lap times are constantly changing. But Ward really on a mission there. I'm gonna um, put my money on him actually to um, maybe win this one. Well, I didn't do so well with my prediction on Peter Baldwin earlier. Roger Orgy now is getting quicker than Nathan Ward behind him and Stephen Jensen ahead of him. So the man that qualified on pole in wetter conditions, Roger Orgy, is now starting to inch up onto the back of the race leader. There he is, look, number three, the white car with the green nose. Roger Orgy making the run up the inside, works his way through the traffic very effectively, doesn't he? He's not hanging around. And so the gap was down to 0.9 of a second at the start of this lap. Seven minutes to go. We're round about at the halfway mark. Ian Houston there, look, has rejoined after his dramas on the first lap but the gap between Jensen and Orgy is coming down. Yeah, Orgy's now the fastest man on the circuit and has definitely taken advantage to those back markers. Um, obviously looking for that slightly drier line and um, he seems to be very quick on just that side of the circuit though. Just, um, he seems to lose out a little bit on this side of the circuit. Now there are more and more back markers that are going to become a factor here pretty soon for the race leaders with six and a half minutes on the clock. So there in 22 is Stephen Jensen. His dad, Erling Jensen, a very rapid rally crosser, many, many years ago used to race against John Button, Jensen's dad. And it was because of John Button's rivalry with Erling Jensen, and he liked the name Jensen, that uh, Jensen was so christened. And comes then now out of uh, Camp Corner. The Jensen pit board goes out, and the gap is up again, because on that lap, Stephen responds 11 tenths of a second. So he breaks away a little bit more from Roger Orgy, and Stephen Jensen also does the best lap of the race. So maybe he was being held up a little bit in traffic with a clear road, he managed to edge away again. Uh, again, this is fantastic racing. Uh, fastest man on the track now is Vivian. So changed again. So um, this really is typical Formula Ford action, you know, cars slipping and sliding around. They're actually being quite sensible. We have only seen you know, one incident, which was on the first lap with one wishbone up in the air. But um, great driving from all of these guys in these really slippery, changing conditions every single lap they go round. The sun has come out, it's stopped raining. The circuit's changing all the time. And we've got now just five and a half minutes of the race to go and Stephen Jensen's advantage over a second again now. Roger Orgy in second spot and Nathan Ward has kind of plateaued, hasn't he? I think he's also been delayed in traffic. If anything, Luke Cooper is getting closer to him. He's fourth, fifth remains Ben Norton and sixth, as Charlie was just saying, is David Vivian, the fastest man on the circuit. So a 124.3, they're going about four seconds quicker than they did in the much wetter qualifying session. And there, I'm afraid, off the road is Christopher Sinsbury, who has put his Van Diemen from 2001 off into the barriers. And this is what he did, Charlie. So just ran wide, understeered, and once you're on the grass, and considering the UK has had so much rain recently, once on the grass, it just sucks you in and you are a passenger. You've just got to hold on to the steering wheel and um, pray that you've got enough spares in the van to fix the car. But um, yeah, not, not, not good um, situations inside that helmet at the moment. That's run by the Riadro Racing team, Riadro being the Higgins family of Richard, Adam and Robert. You piece bits of their names together, you get Riadro Racing. There is 22, Stephen Jensen, who leads the way. And the gap was up again last time to a second and a half. So as the race wears on, he's looking ever more secure. 
Yeah, he has um, eked out a, uh, uh, more of a lead. Uh, Ward, who I put money on earlier in third, is um, now under pressure from Cooper, who is now the fastest man on the circuit in car number seven. So um, this race is changing all the time. Jensen's looking fairly comfortable, but the second, third and fourth man, are, um, I think we're in for a real last scrap. And the man that's ninth, Oliver White, has now done the fastest lap of the race. So fascinating the way this pans out. Adam Higgins in 62, you saw going through. Bob Higgins' son, Mike Madge, number 21, in the only vector uh, chassis on the grid. Not the most popular of Formula Ford cars, but it was pretty rapid in its time for a couple of seasons in the uh, 1800cc Z-Tech Formula Ford era. Blue flag waves to the traffic now. Has that lead gap come right down in the traffic? I think it has. Steven Jensen has really lost out of the back markers, and Roger Orgy, from a second and a half back, is right on his tail with three and a half minutes to go. Over the line they come, and Nathan Ward is there as well. Six tenths cover the top three. Best lap of the race just done by Nathan Ward. Suddenly, we have a completely different look to the race. Three as one for the lead. Yeah, and now um, second place man going wide on the exit of um, camp onto the pit straight is now in the toe and has put Jensen under loads of pressure now. He had a nice, comfortable buffer, but this is going to shape up for the last, last few laps are going to be absolutely awesome. Three minutes we've got on the clock, so keep an eye on the clock, keep an eye on the checkered flag as well, because it came out early for the minis, for whatever reason. The leaders then now, three of them, nose to tail, work their way up towards Old Paddock. Roger Orgy going for the race lead, but conscious as well that he can't afford to leave the door open because that would have his second place in jeopardy. And here comes Nathan Ward up alongside. That's the inside for Hammer down the outside for Tav, but he keeps on coming for the race lead. He's got second. Can he go round the outside for the lead? Yes, he can. What a move! And right round the outside, third to first. What a hero. Absolutely brilliant. So I was, I did put my money on Ward, didn't I? So um, we might keep this betting thing going throughout <laughs> the day. But what a fantastic move round the outside on the slightly grippier part of the circuit and um, cleans up and looks like he's pulling away but three back markers in front of him is not going to want not he doesn't want to see that at all and roger orgy thinking hang on how did that happen i'm still behind this car and you've got past both of us it's just not on well a new leader nathan ward and he's done the best lap of the race as well in all of that 119.6 he leads the way nearly half a second clear of stephen jensen roger orgy a little bit frustrated no doubt in third place we're into the last two minutes then now as the cars work their way up towards quarry Stephen Jensen, who has spent most of the race being chased, now has to do some chasing. And even the pit crew there, when the camera got the shot of, um, of Orgy's um, pit crew, they said P3, and they were like, well, P2, one. <laughs> um, what's just happened there in the last couple of um, corners? But fantastic, absolutely awesome move. Very, very brave. Tower is a, is a very brave corner, and to go around the outside in these greasy conditions and then pull away, yeah. brilliant, fantastic driving. Absolutely right. So Nathan Ward it is who leads. We've got a minute and a half to go. And now Stephen Jensen is still under pressure from Roger Orgy as they work their way through traffic. And because Jensen's having to defend, that's holding him up, isn't it? And that's just allowing Nathan Ward to break away. And Nathan is absolutely hurling that car around. He's using all of the available road. He comes out of Bobby's now. We've got just over a minute on the clock. So is it going to go the full distance this time? More back markers are up the road. And Roger Orgy is still pitching for second place. Down they come. Heading into camp corner. So we're going to get one more lap, I think. It's going to go the full distance with 50 odd seconds on the clock. Through they go. On to the last lap now. So Nathan Ward leading. He's done another best lap of the race into the 18s now. 118.6. Stephen Jensen is second at eight tenths of a second adrift. And Roger Orgy is third. Those two continuing their battle. They've had the bulk of the race, but now for second rather than for the lead. It just goes to show with that sunshine coming out, they've gone like literally six seconds quicker in the last five or six laps from 1 minute 24s, 25s that we were doing to now a 118.4, which is going to be close to a 17. So circuit's drying out very quickly and um, all of the next races that are getting ready are going to be deciding what tyres to go on. Sliding his way out of the S's though, there is Nathan Ward, the race leader. Well, Mantle Coventry has done a great job here, the Spectrum. Australian built car leads the way, similar car in second spot, that of Stephen Jensen and Roger Orgy with the Van Diemen, the 2000 and older car looking for a way around the outside but he still can't do it. And Jensen actually looking for the wettest part of the circuit because he's obviously struggling with setup, absolutely struggling with setup to try and keep his tyres cool so he's looking for the wet line so he's, he's a sitting duck at the moment but can he keep it together for the last corner? We will see. Down they come then, a slower car ahead, which isn't going to be caught. Roger Orgy tries to make a last gasp move for second place. It's not going to pay off for him. And so after an absolutely superb move, it is going to be a win then for number 23, Nathan Ward, who comes across the line to score victory. Stephen Jensen second and Roger Orgy third. 
it was a full second between the top two in the end. It was two tenths between second and third. And on the last lap, Ben Norton, fifth, does the fastest lap of the race into the 17th. Proof that the road is getting drier and drier. And somebody else, Oliver White there in the black car, who was quickest in the race early on, he may go even faster, you never know, on the last lap. Comes across the line, no, not quite, but he has been a, a fast driver in that race. Well, Nathan Ward wins, and I reckon that was an absolutely tremendous move to go all the way around the outside, heading through uh, Tower. Yes, there was a bit more grip there, but he had to make sure he carried the speed in to be alongside and get the car slowed down and get through the corner. Tell us on Twitter what you thought about that move. I reckon that was pretty special. Nathan Ward victorious, very well-deserved win. Yeah, I think Jensen really, from leading from very early on, I think just cooked his tyres, and um, and that's when he, he realised that he was going to have to block, really. But um, to go from third to first, what a brilliant move. Uh, very, very brave, good fun, and I'm sure he's absolutely going to remember that win knowing that um, how, how it happened. Absolutely right. Well, that's confirmation of the results. A 1-2 for the Aussie-built Spectrums. Nathan Ward ahead of Stephen Jensen. Roger Orgy coming home in third. Probably a little bit frustrated about all that. Luke Cooper fourth. Ben Norton is fifth. And David Vivian in the 1992 Swift.